Hi guys, I'm Kaylin. I'm the features editor at the Post and Courier, and I'm here with. How you doing? It's that is Adams, also known as Indigo, and we are fans on bike taxis. <laughs> Getting, getting beers. beers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the three Bs, fans on bike taxis getting beers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you your three A's. So what is your favorite animal, mm -hmm. artist, like musician, whoever, yeah. and actor? Ooh. My favorite animal is a turtle. A turtle? I turtle. Okay, I like that. Huge turtle fan. Nice. Uh, my favorite artist is a mix between Andre 3000 and Lil Wayne. I can't really, oh, can't my soul won't let me pick. That's fair. And uh, my favorite actor, Denzel Washington. Oh, classic. For sure. What is the first CD that you remember buying? First CD that I bought, um, Like Father, Like Son uh, by Lil Wayne and Birdman. Wow, when did that come out? That was 2007, I want to say. Maybe like 2007, okay. 2006. Okay, 2007. Okay. Yeah. Singing versus rapping, you do like both. What do you like about each of them? And do you have one you prefer? Singing is becoming a little bit more of my uh, go-to with it. Yeah. Finding my voice, like uh, Amita from Black Zola has been really helping me with singing. Yeah. Adrian is an amazing singer, so uh, he's been like helping me with my breathing and all that good stuff. And, gotcha, yeah. It's been manifesting, so I would say that I'm leaning towards sing singing. <laughs> Hold on, air quotes. <laughs> air quotes <first. laughs> But um, hip hop, like rapping, gives me a little bit more of a, a free range to kind of express myself. So I was gonna say, how much of like when you're doing a set, is it planned versus improvised? I would say strong 50-50. You're a writer as well. You write for Extra Chill, which is a local music blog. How did you start writing for them? How did you get involved in that? Uh, so first, shout out to Chris Gardner, shout out to Chris Hoover, Mike Rose. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I've known Gardner for a long time, or like a, at least a good two years, high and by on the scene. He's big in the music scene. Yes. He's at all the shows around here. So I didn't know, but I would see him all the time, and I'm like, who is this guy? Like, everybody knows him. He's the coolest guy, and he's always sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So I'm like, who is this man? And so we started having small conversations just about music and stuff in general. Mm -hmm. And then um, we were at... Um, Royal American and he was just asking me about myself and I was like I minored in journalism when I was in college mm. but I just never did anything with it and he's like come right for extra chill and I kind of like laughed and I was like all right cool you know yeah and then he texted me the next day he's like, like um I'm gonna have it. Chris email you tomorrow and we're gonna get you on payroll type thing and I'm like word that's amazing that's awesome so what's like a favorite article you've written my favorite writing piece would have to be the post occurring thing we just worked yeah. on this together so yeah let's yes. talk a little bit about that we just did for the 50th anniversary of hip-hop this year we did a three-part story and indy wrote our main story on what is the state of hip-hop right now yes. from the eyes of a, a local hip-hop artist and then we did a story on the past kind of the history of hip-hop here just kind of a slice of the life yeah. and then of the future so what was it like writing your story for that yeah. I sat on it for like a week, but um, I already had like preconceived notions of where I wanted to go with it because it's something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Yeah. And very seldomly do you get to give like an uninhibited version of your opinion about something, um, especially with music in today's day and age. Yeah. So um, I felt with like the power of Post a Courier, your support with music in general in the city, yeah. and you guys trusting in my opinion with it. Um, I just took the time to really formulate and orchestrate like my thought patterns or thought process on what I really feel about Charleston music. So, I feel like you did such a good job with it. Like the story Thank turned you. out so well. It's so. just cool to get like a take from somebody who's actually part of the scene. You know? Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Indy, for being on the bike taxi. Okay. I love it. Um, and we're about to go catch up with the rest of Rodeo. So. Sounds good. All right. Yes. All right, we've got Rhodium right now with us. We're out hey back guys. at Prohibition, hanging out. Um, so thanks for being here, guys. No Appreciate problem. it. Thank you for having us. So why don't we go down the line and just everyone introduce themselves and what you do in the band. Uh, what's up? My name is uh, Alvin Brooks. I'll be on the sax. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm Josh, and I play guitar. My name's Amita. I play piano, do some vocals. And my name is Indy, Indy Gold, and I am a vocalist. The first question I have for y'all is how did this project come together? 
uh, me and Josh were in a band called uh, uh, Black Zola, still in a band called Black Zola. And um, we started to move towards uh, doing a lot of shows with like with the hip hop artists, good friends with like uh, Cody Dixon, uh, Noah Jones, those guys, kind of mixing with the, the, yeah. the fusion music that was going on here in town. And that's where we met Indy, which I had the Purple Buffalo. And, oh, cool. Uh, I remember he, he was just sitting there and he watched our whole set like all the way through and I'd never met him before. And I remember thinking like, that guy's pretty cool. We should go talk to him. Didn't know he was become one of my best friends like ever after that. I love so that. Now we write music now. But the three of us started and we do, we do the main songwriting and then we got Alvin on, on sax and uh, Chris Taylor on drums. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Can't be here today. He's under the weather. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. It is the season. I always would see, uh, you know, Black Zola doing their thing and everything. And then me and Indy were actually already doing, like, uh, shows and everything together. And so, like, yeah, everything just kind of came came together real quick. It was so easy. It was real organic. So, like, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I still, I play with a lot of different people anyways. But, like, you know, no, I, I, this is, like, my favorite, too. Like, these are, this I is love what that. I love to do. Definitely. So, what... Uh, what are you guys inspired by or what is the inspiration behind Rodium versus like some of the other projects that you guys work on? I mean, definitely just like passion for the craft, honestly, is probably first and foremost. I mean, for me, I assume it's probably the same for all these other guys and, you know, brotherhood as well. And just trying to write stuff that's original. You know, a lot of music's coming out nowadays. that kind of sounds regurgitated in a way. Yeah. So we're trying to, kind of just reach new goals with uh, with our sound, intertwining kind of classic rock influences from myself and this guy with the hip hop from these guys. Yeah. It, very organic, like uh, like Alvin said, we come together. We just sit in a room and just come up with stuff and it ends up being in song usually. See, like we, we play we love to play live. I think we're not we're not necessarily like the studio rats kind yeah. of guys. You know, we, yeah. we my biggest thing has always been like, what, what are those things you can sing? What are those things you can play? How do you, how do you, how do you get the audience to feel, to feel something, to, to break them a little bit? You know, right. to, so we right. all get there together, kind of feeling that, that embodiment of like, the, the live hip hop scene was starting to grow and kind of taking it from a different angle and being like, let's write first, not just be a band that plays, you know, what, an originally created beat in a new way. Let's start from a writing perspective of writing that right. said music, like in the first place, like from a band perspective. Right. So going forward with the project, and then that kind of um, sends us into the direction of how we're going to do the vocals, how we're going to do hip hop, who's going to sing here, who's going to do that part. Mm-hmm. Josh will bring something in and be like, "Why don't we do this? I'll write a part for Al." We'll just kind of all work together, and just really the same camaraderie that we try to share during the week to get ready for the shows. Is the same thing we try to bring to the shows is that same camaraderie and that same, you know. I talk to Indy like on stage, like we're in my living room. Like, I know. Nice I've jeans, seen, dude. I've nice seen jeans. perform, and it really is. It kind of feels like. I never planned those right things. There. It's just like I look at them, like, we got some nice jeans on there. He's like, thank you, man. Next song. Yeah. It's always cool. I love that. That makes you guys different. You know, sets it apart a little thank bit. You. Yeah. What is that like when you're live coming to a part in a song where you're like, all right, we don't know what we're going to do after this? How do you feed off each other, vibe? Well, with I it? think it's a lot like training for, you know, like, like practicing for like a basketball game or, or a football game or something. We All of us have been athletes before, too, so it's kind of like. You know, way back in the day now. <laughs> My legs don't work. We don't play no sports no more. But there is that sort of like you practice for the game, but the game brings its own energy. What do you guys have coming out? We got some stuff cooking. I mean, you know, we's, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, every time you get into the jam room, you, you know, you could play through a couple of songs you already know. And even the songs that we've already written end up, you know, let's try this part at the end live. Like, we're, yeah. like he said, like Amita said, we're a very live focused band right now <laughs> there is music coming from rhodium do not fret um but like you said like we're really just mastering the craft of our live cohe like our live cohesion our live sound together so that when we do get into the studio like because with recording with a band and a vocalist you have to multi-track things you know so we want to make sure that we are using our time wisely so if we can perfect it with doing the live shows and we can perfect it by doing bigger shows and then get into the get into the studio and drop like a little EP or something. Like we don't yeah. know exactly how we're going to go about it, but we have a direction as far as there will be some early music coming from Rhodium in early 2024. Okay, I love and, um, it. To be, we don't want to overproduce, we want it to be just natural, almost like you, you could be close your eyes and imagine yourself just 
you know, at a show, and that's what we want it to kind of sound like. Yeah, exactly. like how do you transfer that from the live stage into the studio? Rodium is, we are just now, I think our first show was last year, January. Yep. At uh, uh, Elliot Barrow, the, the oh, wine cool. bar. Yeah. That was our first show, just the three of us, like no drums, anything. And um, that was, uh, you know, that was kind of the beginning. So as we're approaching the, the wraparound year, we're starting to feel like, okay, like now we have like our sound a little bit. We're just, as, as it continues to grow, we're getting closer to where we're like, okay, we got about three or four bangers that need to, yeah. to come out. That's right, bangers, y'all. <laughs> you heard it here, <laughs> bangers. Yeah, you know, the, the, you know, soon in the beginning of, of 2024. Sure. Yeah. I love it. Um, once again, shout out to Kaylin, shout out to Post and Courier. Like that article that we just did really woke up a lot in me as far as like writing, journalism, and just feeling respected for your opinion. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, Oftentimes you can put your opinion out, you can put your your two cents out into something and it can kind of just get thrown under the wind. But I feel like with this specific situation, it is something that is gonna like reverberate for some time because yeah. it's authentic and there's so many influences coming from the whole thing that you have with right. the 50th anniversary piece. Yes, so, check out the 50th anniversary of Hip Hop Story, Post and Courier. Hundred percent. So that motivated me to kind of get my journalism bag. So a little bit more journalism, a lot more music that's on Spotify and Apple because most of our stuff is live. Right. But putting right. things on streaming pat platforms mm -hmm. and um, getting it to the people. Uh, that's that's our goal right now for 2024. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all yeah. coming out. Let's yeah, do let's cheers. Just, let's cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Very warm. He's like, I'm already done with my drink. Cheers in spirit. Love it. Thank you. Yes.